And joining you now here on 105.3 The Fan is Stephen Jones. And a good afternoon to you, sir. Thanks for joining us once again. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, reports Will McClay is staying once again. Can you confirm that? Yeah, I mean, that, this is something that, uh, you know, comes up every year because uh, obviously he's a uh, – you know, a guy who does an amazing job for us and had a big finger and, uh, you know, what we do in terms of uh, uh, not only putting together our roster every year through the draft, free agency, uh, all the ways uh, trades, the way you acquire talent, uh, but also working with our coaching staff and really understanding, uh, you know, with Jerry and I, what we need to do to uh, give our staff every chance in the world to put together a championship team. But, uh uh, obviously, we thank the world of Will and, uh, you know, always want him to uh, uh, be a cowboy. But, uh, you know, everything's always a work in progress. So do you see that like as a foreseeable future thing or is it year to year? Very popular guy every year, like you said. Yeah, as long as, uh, you know, obviously when we have the success we've had uh, over the years and certainly uh, uh, people seem to think we do a good job drafting, which uh, we're confident in, then, you know, Will's always, I'm sure, going to be presented opportunities. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, don't ever take that for granted. But we also, uh, like he said, I mean, we'd love for Will to be here for uh, as long as uh, uh, we can keep him here. Is it does, it does it require, like, or would you consider elevating his title to a place that he wouldn't be uh, looking, to, uh, you know, for a, a, a higher title somewhere else? It would be yeah, impossible. I'd, uh, we're I'm not into titles or anything like that. I've never been a title guy, and we just uh, we're just gonna keep doing what we do. It's working. Just Super Bowl titles, right? That's right. Yes, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I mean, the you get two home games now. Hopefully, as long as you beat Green Bay, is it fair to say this might be the best opportunity you guys have had in recent memory to go on that run? Well, it's certainly laid out for us, but I can assure you one thing. There's only one thing this coach staff and this team and the organization's worried about, and that's the Packers. I mean, they're played at a high level down the stretch. They were 7-3, and three, have a really good young quarterback who's playing at a high level. And uh, we just have to, uh, uh, you know, obviously focus on the task at hand, which is uh, beating the Packers. Uh, as, as you said, there's some things that lay out well for us that uh, because we played well during the season, we give ourselves uh, an opportunity to have advantages, but we'll take it uh, week by week. That's the only way you can do that in the playoffs. Obviously, teams are in these playoffs because they've had successful years and uh, they play really good football, so we got our work cut out for us. We know Jerry's a pretty superstitious guy. Is it true that he laid down the law all week long, uh, no cheese consumed by any players or coaches? <laughs> Well, I may have missed it, but uh, uh, who knows? But uh, he is superstitious, uh, and I am as well. But uh, uh, like I said, I, I don't think anyone's uh, taking the cheese, uh, as Bill Parcells used to say. Uh, everybody's focused uh, on this football game, and no, you know, we're, we've got to go out and execute and play at a high level if uh, if if we want to get uh, if we want to beat the Packers and take the next step. Well, and not to get too personal here, Stephen, but we did get a Tolo that texted in. Do you ever call Jerry dad, or is it always just Jerry? Uh, I, when I'm talking to him, it's dad. I mean, he's been, my, obviously, my father forever. And, uh, you know, times professionally, I'll refer to him as Jerry. And uh, But, uh, you know, when he and I are talking, it's uh, always referred to him as dad. Stephen, have, have the Packers been, in, as you look at the playoffs throughout your history of being with the team, some of your greatest moments and also some of your worst moments of playoff football? <laughs> Probably fair to say. Uh, well, you know, we have had our share of good ones, but we've also, you know, had our share of disappointments. And when you play guys like Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, uh, that's going to happen. And obviously uh, the Packers organization is one of the best in the NFL. Uh, they always do a great job. Uh, they use always have great coaches and uh, great players, and they're a great organization. So you got your hands full every time you go up against them. And as you said, we've had some really big wins, but uh, we've also had our share of disappointments. Well, at least Aaron Rodgers, that boogeyman, is not part of this one. But Jordan loves him playing really good football. What did you guys think of him coming out of the draft, and what do you think of the way he's been playing? Yeah, I think he, uh, we thought a lot of him coming out. I uh, felt like he was that first-round caliber uh, type of skill set and uh, obviously he's finally getting an opportunity after Aaron moved on and uh, you know he certainly uh, 
uh, you know, started off, uh, you know, as all young quarterbacks do who hadn't played a lot, uh, learning the ropes a little bit. But, uh, you know, they've just done a great job with him and giving him, putting him in great positions to win football games for him. And I think he's playing at a high level. Steven, is uh, being around Mike McCarthy on Packer Week a good thing or a bad thing? I can tell you this, he's focused. And, uh, you know, obviously we lost uh, when we went up there and, you know, you know, had a chance to, to get him, but uh, we didn't finish. And uh, uh, certainly I know, uh, you know, he's not going to say it, but you know deep down sure. uh, when you go against a team uh, that you've been a big part of, it's a storied past, then uh, you want to go win that football game. And, uh, you know, that always happens in this league. You end up going against uh, people who are either, you know, are ex-Cowboys or uh, we have people on our team that played against uh, a team we may be playing, and there's no doubt. I think they, it brings a little extra uh, that you can't help it, a little extra, uh, you know, to the competition when you line up. Yeah, uh, Stephen, he has a street named of him uh, after him up there. Uh, if he get a Super Bowl here, could we get a street name for him at the Star? <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's very possible, uh, okay. Brian. At the end of the day, uh, you know, people who uh, win championships around here, whether sure. it's uh, rings of honor, whether it's streets, whether it's uh, uh, the appropriate places, we all know how hard it is to win in this league. Uh, we all know especially how hard it is to uh, win a Super Bowl championship. And when one of those happen, uh, the people get the proper, ultimately get the proper recognition. AP All Pro list came out today. You got nine Cowboys that made either the first or the second team. How proud are you of that? I think it's just outstanding. These guys have worked hard all year. Uh, they're not twelve and five by accident. They don't have, uh, you know, they didn't win the East. They didn't uh, uh, certainly give ourselves a chance to have several home games here uh, by accident. These guys have worked their uh, worked worked their butts off all year. Not only are they, you know, great skills, you know, great talents around here, but these guys are men who work and uh, have the right football character. Certainly Dak leads the way with that in terms of the leadership he provides, but the whole group's bought in and uh, so well-deserved by so many guys. And I'm sure there's guys, uh, you know, I hadn't seen the uh, the full look, but I'm sure there's guys who uh, uh, should have been considered that didn't make it, but their time will come. Was this best uh, Dak's best season ever? Uh, I think it's got to be right there. I mean, obviously, uh, the season's not over. We'll see. And, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, it could go down. As you know, quarterbacks and head coaches and those guys, as you, you know, once you establish yourself, uh, you know, as a franchise quarterback slash great player, uh, you know, the next step are to win the championships. And I know Dak wants to take that next step. Speaking of that, you know, the next step, I, I know this game is so huge, Steve, but I was just looking at like the off season. This, this team's going to be around, isn't it? We're not, we're not going anywhere after this year. The, the, the window, if, if you believe in window talk, that thing is, is firmly open for the foreseeable future, aren't we? Yeah, we like our, we like our foundation. Uh, we like where we are from a uh, sour cap standpoint in terms of, you know, keeping the guys that we need to keep around here, whether it's Dak, whether it's CD, whether it's Micah. Uh, you know, just to head up the list. But uh, uh, speaking of all pros, but, uh, uh, you know, those are guys that are, are going to be a big part of this. You know, inevitably you lose guys that you wish you could keep. Uh, you know, I, we just have a great group of players here. But unfortunately, you, you don't always get to keep them all. And when you have a successful team uh, and you play for the Cowboys, then a lot of times that can uh, – you know, help you get rewarded. Sometimes maybe not where you, you know where they want to be in terms of most of our players. I feel like want to stay here, but sometimes uh, you know to get what they rightfully deserve. The uh, you know the uh, you know the reward, if you will, in terms of monetarily, uh, then they have to uh, uh, you know make the deal somewhere else. But uh, overall, we feel really good about uh, the foundation uh, of this football team. We obviously. Uh, uh, you know, we're we're focused on the task at hand, but, uh, you know, there's a few of us who obviously have to keep our eye on the ball in terms of uh, what the cap, you know, what the salary cap's going to look like and, you know, how we fill holes if we happen to lose players. It seems like, you know, you mentioned the guys being focused a couple of times. Not only are they focused on the goal, but they're talking championship. Like, I don't remember the Cowboys talking about it in previous years. They're 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 speaking about their confidence and like counting down, you know, what needs to be done like we just saw the Rangers do, actually. 
Well, they have their eye on the ball, and it certainly starts with uh, – you know, start. Let's. Uh, you know, starts at the top with Jerry. I assure you, uh, where where his eye is, and then uh, certainly Coach McCarthy and his staff uh, are laser focused. And then, you know, starting with Dak, uh, you know, our leadership council, this team, uh, you feel the intensity, uh, you know, in the building. And uh, I think they got their eye on the ball. And I, uh, I'll be surprised if we don't play, go out and play uh, uh, some of our best football. Seems like you're pretty dang healthy. Looking at this practice report, this is good news, isn't it? Yeah, this great news. I mean, you, you know, you obviously, uh, you know, it, it's almost impossible this day and time to, uh, you know, not have some guys that end up on the injury list like Diggs and uh, Leighton Vanderash. You, you miss guys like that, but all 32 have that issue, and uh, you know that's why you gotta, uh, you know, uh, really uh, have a great roster from top to bottom because ultimately you're. You know, guys are going to have to play and, uh, you know, that aren't necessarily start out as the anointed starters. But uh, we feel good about uh, the health of this team. Stefan's had a great week. Uh, he'll be ready to roll. And, uh, you know, overall, we we feel good and feel good about the depth on this roster. And uh, we just got to go out and execute and uh, play at a high level. It's great we're doing it at AT&T Stadium where we feel like we play our best football. We're so fortunate to have what we believe are the best fans uh, you know, in the NFL, and uh, I know the uh, the atmosphere will be electric, and we look forward to it. Yeah, Steve, it's a wide out game. What do you recommend for a big fat guy like me wearing white? I don't think that's probably the best idea to do. Still, I mean, can I, I think I go- you'd look good in a in a good white tux, Brian. You Just, think so? Uh, yeah, you get you a good tux on and get rolling. Yeah. and uh, he'll, a white tux, you'll be set. I look like Fats Domino out there doing the, the <laughs> fast. But uh, you, I, yeah. you and I are always looking in the same sections. In terms <laughs> <laughs> something to hide, uh, certain something to hide a few pounds. Yeah, Bucky. Bucky hates you and I walking in there and seeing him right for that sideline gear, right? <laughs> uh, I go, I get, I go over and have to wear some of that gear our players are wearing. Yeah, I'm with you. I am so with you, man. <laughs> and more importantly, the offensive lineman. Yes, yes. yes, exactly, exactly. Well, thank All you, right, guys. Cheers, buddy. Uh, good luck over there on Sunday. You guys take care. <laughs>